this is one of my pieces. Uh, both of my pieces are really different because I wanted to have a little bit of contrast between them, uh, different moods, I can say. Uh, I guess one of the things that I learn or I can say I understand better with this project was that uh, to do color notes or get better at picking colors or combining them. Uh, thanks to, to all the research I did first, uh, that was one thing that I can say uh, I understood better. Uh, that was something that was lacking at first when I started the project. Uh, it was, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I got stuck uh, a few times uh, with the project because I didn't know what was the vision I wanted to uh, display or the mood. But once I, I understood that better, everything felt uh, easier. Uh, I'm happy with the, this one. Uh, I, I know I can maybe get better colors uh, maybe in the bounce light or in the shadows but for now i i like the state of the painting uh, i don't know if you can show the, the next one yeah definitely uh as you can see this one is a, a, a bit darker uh, a bit moody uh this was inspired by a uh, a favorite photography uh, photographer of mine that's called Henry Prestes. I guess that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, but I wanted something uh, eerie, something dark, something spooky, uh, or mysterious, I can say. But I, I didn't want it something like uh, you can say conventional or normal. I wanted some the colors that felt that different or. Uh, uh different in a way you know that like sometimes uh dark scenes tend to be blue or have that uh bluish tints mm -hmm. in it mm -hmm. but I, I didn't want that i wanted something more uh warm i guess but that felt uh eerie or mysterious so i i think i got it uh i'm happy with it uh i really like how the the branches on the tree uh came to be uh I think this uh, this this painting was one of the hardest one because I was overthinking everything. I don't know why, but I can say that's one of the things I got better uh, at it, uh, overcoming those uh, roadblocks. I can get, I can say. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope you guys like it. Thank you. Yeah. No. Thanks for sharing, Jesus. Um, I think one few things that you did really cool was that you chose different times of day, right? Um, you chose a daytime and then you chose something where you, I felt like you completely pushed yourself. Um, I mean, seeing from where it started from, you know, here mm -hmm. to here to here, I mean, it's such a cool involvement, right? Like you really, I could see that you're trying to take the notes, shift it at every step of the way. Um, like you said, I really enjoy the noise that's going on right here. Um, I think if we zoom in, I think you really captured that balance of what I was saying was not actually literally painting every leaf, but just implying, right? And I think Jesus did a really good job of that, capturing that atmosphere. I can pick up on the subtle pinks and the greens in the sky. Like you said, not that conventional bluish, you know, nighttime feel that we have that sort of playing with greens being the dominant color, but then light pinks and reds being the subdominant mm -hmm. complementary colors. I think that worked out um, really cool. I actually kind of also like how weirdly saturated that is. Like it doesn't make sense, but it's cool. So yeah. I think that you did a really good job on that. And also in the other one, um, I think this is from where it evolved as well, you know, from, you know, changing the composite, which was your first, was this your planar sketch? That was your planar sketch. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Okay. From your planar sketch, really cool to see how it evolved into this, right. Adding clouds. I love the subtleties you got in the clouds, right. That's what I'm talking about. Shifting temperature while maintaining similar value. You see like, yes, the subtle pinks, the blues, I can color pick them. I can see them, you know, but when you put them against that gray, you know, they're all the gray of the background, you know, they're, they feel colorful, but they're all relatively on the left side of the color cube if you color pick them. Um, so I think this one has a really nice mood as well. I think if we could just pop, um, let me see my, 
little critiques would be, this is my job as a teacher, um, yeah. is to maybe play with, I'm not sure if this would make sense in this light, but to separate, I don't actually know if this would work, but maybe to just push some of the people a little bit more in shadow. Uh, it'd be a lot easier if I did this with levels, actually. So let me just shift it a little bit and then inverse it. But I think if it just, oh, I'm sorry. I think if we just maybe push some of these more in shadow, like some of these characters more in shadow a little bit so that you could push that sort of light, the like mm -hmm. a subtle rim light hitting their faces, I think that would be good. And I think the shadows are just missing a little bit of the local color. Okay. So a trick that you can do is putting your brush in opacity. So you see when I press five right there, it changed mm -hmm. the opacity about 50%. Um, I'm just going to pick a yellow ochre and just sort of maybe even less opacity in the brush. I don't usually paint this way, but find out that for paint overs, it's quite an effective way. So and it almost kind of mimics traditional painting. And I actually just was like playing around this at the Bulbly Gardens and I just wrote a newsletter about it. So I'm just mixing a little bit of that yellow ochre and it brings a little bit of that earth tone back into the shadows so that um, it, so that it doesn't feel like it's just blue on, on blue. I think someone else in the other class was making their shadows too such. I don't think it was this cut. But you see those hints of yellow mm -hmm. put in the right place can do a lot. Um, another thing is try to just break up the, I know, I know this doesn't make any sense, but it's something like try to just find a brush maybe to, I think you indicated the windows fine. It's not like there's a ton of detail, but something that can be kind of uh, next level is taking some sort of brush that can that can just break up your shapes just a little bit um in a sort of like fun way that doesn't yeah. that still gives the impression of of you know what you're looking at right so it sort of breaks up that monotony a little bit and it you know it's like Zach Retz does this you know Craig Craig Mullins does this where it's like you just have these it's like, if you look at Craig Mullen's paintings are scribbles, literally up close, right? It's yeah. just like the values make so much sense. It's just to add a little bit of playful texture, you know, a little bit. So I think for you, because you're getting to that more advanced level and you're definitely improved from what you posted on the blog, not blog, the discussion board, mm -hmm. you know, now, you know, your compositions and everything, um, you know, I think, I think kind of pushing that a little bit far, farther and thinking more and more less literally while understanding how light works at the same time will really help this also i just want to break up this like ball shape of a bush here a little bit more so like maybe just grouping this whole bush but i like your greens you've you've definitely like nailed that whole color temperature i just want to like somehow change that ball looking bush that's okay. it that's my personal but little things right it's about taking those it's those little little things now um, yeah. That can really make a difference, but great job, Jesus. Um, I think you did. a. am really, really, I'm proud of you. And I think you should be proud of yourself as well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh, and I'm so sorry. Before we start, I want to welcome new student. Uh, are you there? I don't know if he's here. Uh, uh, no, I don't. Leobov, I don't think you're here. Maybe they missed the time. Well, I wanted to welcome a new student, but I don't think they're here. Lucas, are you here? I see Lucas here. Hey, I'm here. I don't know if you're talking about me. Oh, okay. No, no. I just, no, I just, I just wanted to see if people were here. I'm just, okay. I'm just calling random people. All right. I'm going to call on people randomly now. I'm not going to go in order, guys. So I'm going to keep you guys on your feet. Okay. Uh, let's go with Sophie. Hello. Hi, Sophie. How are you? Okay, so you have three pieces. So why don't you uh -huh. talk about this one? So this is my, um, I took a reference photo of the ocean with like a boat in it. And I think this one, my, my, my boat paintings like went through a lot of change overall because like 
I remember you told me to use one to push high key and one to push low key. And so for the low key one, I wanted to go for like an ocean like kind of scene where like it was like 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 really rock like like kind of like a storm. And um yeah, and then you also gave me a crit about the composition, which overall I'm really glad that I did because I think it looks so be much better. Um, yeah. What did you learn the most from doing this low key painting? I think, I think my I think the thing I learned the most was like hiding, like overall in general painting was learning how to hide edges and mm. um learning like this like gradation because like usually i paint very like flat colored and then this like really i use a lot more smudging which i actually really really enjoy um that's great mm -hmm. so um I, you did three pieces so you're overachiever but i'm happy you did <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk about this one first. Um, yeah, I know I told you to look up, I'm blanking on his name, but this amazing wave guy. He's a, uh, so he's great reference Evan for Nosky. that. Yes, yes, Evanoski, thank you. Um, your final piece, I'm very happy to see that you, I saw that you're playing with the edges, right? If we remember from the week before, there's so many hard edges everywhere, right? I remember guys, when I say when there's hard edges everywhere, but your value gradations aren't perfect, it's going to look like blocks of shape that don't transition well with each other. Does that make sense? Because if you look at someone like Albert Mielgo or, um, you know, Nikolai Lockestern or something, I might be butchering their names, but you know, there are people, um, who, who, um, you don't use a lot of soft edges, but they have really careful shapes of, careful value of really particular value. So I know my previous feedback, I said, it's too harsh, right? And some of these edges like right here, right here, like this value to this value, too contrasty, too quickly, right? So it seems that you solved a lot of that in, in your final painting. I would go even further to even study how clouds, uh, let me pick, pick a brush, right? Pick a brush that allows you to sort of even get prep, you know, with, with pen pressure, you can, you can even get, I'm already pressing too hard. I mean, clouds are really hard to paint. They are. Um, and it, it takes practice. I mean, it's not just like one painting. You're like, Oh, I'm a cloud expert now, you know? So, um, I would, I would, e I like, I like the softness that's going on. I would even maybe think about how the clouds are, are wrapping around in some, in some areas, I, mean, I kind of need more reference myself. Um, I mean, to be honest here, your clouds feel pretty cool, like Columbus clouds. Uh, it's just that the, the key is totally different, right? Um, I want to try something really quick with your piece here where we put part of the boat in shadow just because it feels almost like it should like part of it should be in part in shadow like that. And then like the bottom part is being hit with light, you know? So playing with like all these ways in the back, just merging in the shadow. And it's like, bam, what's that one piece? I sadly don't know this artist, but there's one piece I used to show where it was like the wave, just like the crest of the wave was hit with light. And then everything else was in shadow, right? So it's like, you know, even that's too yellow. It's like just, it's like really delicate. And then everything else is like just, it's in shadow. It's almost like that spotlight kind of light. But I think if you, if you push that even more in your piece, it'd be really epic, right? Like just pushing that a little bit right there. Um, but overall, I think, see, just little changes. I mean, I have two layers. And just something like that can completely shift the mood even more right? if you wanted to push the drama even more because i feel like this piece is really going for drama i will say sophie i really enjoy your matrix study here your matrix study i think captured the original drama that you wanted we just needed to maybe find a few more smaller shapes maybe um you know that the volume finding you know finding maybe kind of some some of those smaller cascading shapes um, 
but I like, I almost like, you know, that almost, uh, you know, mostly in shadow, I get that feeling of that high contrast drama there. So um, great job on this piece though. Uh, let's see. Thank okay. You. So let's go to your, oh my goodness, my little tiny screen. Okay. Okay. So this piece was your more high key. I'm going to call this mid key piece. I'm going to say. Yeah. It, I, I changed it up quite a I bit. Mid key. Um, yeah. but, but I think one thing I noticed, um, or like I learned a lot about this process is like the importance of reference photos because mm -hmm. I tend to get really impatient and I just want to create like what my mind is thinking at that moment. But like, I realized helping, like having a reference photo really keeps me grounded and makes sure that what I paint is like actually like good, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Uh, um, yeah, so same matrix study, um, I, the values, and you gave me crit on the clouds, how it was like too symmetrical, like the, um, I, I put the red, not, not symmetrical, but like straight line mm -hmm. i put the red line there and then i changed the key even higher but then i reverted back to um a mid key piece i think right, just because right. i like the contrast a bit more right 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 no that's totally fine it's your piece um i think it turned out really successful i i really like the blowout of the clouds um i almost i think just so it doesn't look like it's sitting on glass maybe just put a little bit of overlap and the water, you know, and the and the boat. So it looks like, you know, the water is splashing up on the boat and all that stuff. Uh, and maybe just finding a brush that. Uh, I like this dot brush. I think it was I don't know where I got. It. I think it was James Park, Albert Mago, but um, this sort of sometimes it can mimic that sparkle. And I think. The thing I think is it's, it feels a little bit like snow, uh, like a snow thing. I would just maybe, I mean, just kind of cool. I mean, maybe it's a boat stranded in ice. That's what I'm kind of, <laughs> the, uh, another mood that I can get from it. I mean, that's kind of cool, actually. I can see it now being like, you know, the ice, what do you call it? The Yeah, ice. But um, maybe having a little bit more of a gradation a subtle gradation where the clouds, so it's not just light and then dark, right? Um, and then maybe just, uh, just, just, I don't want to take away your white, your light areas, but I just want to almost feel like there's a, let me try something here. What if I brought just a little bit of warm in? I'm not sure that would work. I'm trying to see if this would feel like a warmer gray, but might not work in this particular piece. One thing in your reference I'd like to see because clouds is such a big part of your piece, Sophie, is more cloud reference. So I'd like to see what clouds you referenced. Yeah. Do you uh, have but, any good, sorry, do you have any good artists to reference for clouds? Yeah, I mean Edgar Payne's a great one. He paints tons of clouds. It doesn't, it's not beach scenes, but they're cloud scenes. Uh Frederick Wall is another one that has lots of great beach and cloud scenes together. Emil Carlson. I was doing a study of his piece. Let me see if I can actually pull it up. I hope it's on this hard drive. Let me pull it up for you guys really quick. Cause I was doing a study of hit and I it was kicking my butt. I was like, how the heck did he picked these colors, uh, but Emil Carlson might have referenced him. Yeah, like this to me is beautiful subtlety, right? Like the clouds, it's it's a different kind of shading. It's a different kind of light that you have, but just look at the masses and then the smaller shapes where he puts that glow, the brightest area. I mean, reckon, granted, I don't know how well this reproduction is, uh, I have a book of his still lifes. His composition, his compositions and his still lifes are great. I've done grid studies over them and all of them are just impeccably designed. Uh, but look at the glisten in the water, how intentional it's not mimicking real life, right? It's almost like intentional. It is intentional shape design. So he's a great one, I think, for clouds. But um, I could also pull up. Eh. 
Uh, I think I have Frederick. Yeah, here's another one with Frederick Wall. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't mention him before, but he's another great one to study ocean and cloudscapes. He does a ton of them. So that's Frederick and then W-A-U-G-H. But uh, yeah, he, he'd be a great one to study. Thank you. And, yeah, and you have one more piece, right? So let's talk about uh -huh. this one really quick. So um, this one, I ran with it a lot because for me, I really wanted to work on like some visual development, like portfolio pieces. Um, and this one was actually inspired by like, like the colors were a lot of it was inspired by like one of my favorite, like contemporary artist, Peter Doig. Um, and I had another piece along with it that was like a daytime piece that was a lot yeah. more saturated. But ultimately, honestly, I wasn't really feeling that piece overall, like from like start to finish. Like I just didn't really like it or where I was going. So I just kind of cut it out. That's but yeah, fun. I really liked I really liked this one because of the blue in the sky. But yeah, I want <laughs> to we just like, talked about like... Jesus. <laughs> hey, you guys <laughs> yeah. show different kinds of blue. So mm -hmm. nighttime. Yeah, I really wanted, wanted to show that like nostalgic feeling of like after like a fun day, like you're sleepy and then your parents like, like, like take you home and it's just like a warm kind of feeling. Yeah. Versus totally. like, this is like scary, scary, like mysterious scene. Totally. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's, it's, you guys tackle both low key and in different ways. Uh, I think your final piece turned out pretty successful. There's just I like the rendering your car. Your car is believable. There's something about the value of your people that I think is almost a little, they're too light. Um, so I'm, 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 I keep looking back at your, your value, your color key, because there's something like you see how they're darker here, like they're darker. And then there's that more of that rim, rim light hit from the lights here. So I almost, oh, I hate this brush. It's a soft brush. Okay. So I almost feel like we need to bring back some of that, like that there, where's the light coming from? Okay. So her silhouette like that, but then also pop, let's just try overlay, you know, pop. Okay. The light's coming from there. Light logic. She's going to be lit here. Her face is going to be rim lit. The umbrella is going to be lit. Maybe part of that. You see how much more inviting and warm that looks. You didn't have enough contrast in your people. So, you know, finding maybe campfire references or, uh, you know, here, just, just keep the lighting simple, right? They could just be like that. That just pops a lot more. You read them against your backdrop a lot more. It's about readability in the end, right? So before we had this, it was yeah, like you could see them, but now it's like you can feel the story much more. Would you agree? So the other thing is it, your the light here. I know it's very tempting to do like a ha ha ha, you know, that, you know, like very solid. It's not really going to be like that. It's going to be mostly lit. Maybe on the sides, but maybe mostly on the bottom. Like it's just not going to be that. I don't feel your geometry of your. Your architecture, it's like this not going to be lit as strong. I don't feel the architecture of your house enough. There's something weird about the perspective. Also, because the light isn't that strong, but then your rim light on your building is very strong. I'm giving critiques to Sophie, guys, but this you guys can all use this because all of you guys can continue studying from life. I would say no one is uh, immune from that, right? Um, maybe even... So I'm watching you guys. Don't check out, okay? Don't check out while you're in my class. You can check out anywhere else, but not my class. Okay, so here, I'm trying to... What is... Oh my gosh, it's being so slow again. So maybe you can just add a slight glow. I'm, I'm using now... Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, I'm using now linear dodge. Hold on. Layers. Okay, so linear dodge. Linear dodge is kind of a hit or miss. It's too much. That's too cool. I'm going to completely drop that. I use a lot of linear dodge for power effects, but you see, I'm just adding a slight glow there. 
Um, and then, you know, maybe think about where that light influence. Okay. For a lot of you guys, I'm still seeing that it's, you'll, you'll understand where light hits immediately, but then you forget where it, where it influences you know, even in its non-immediate surroundings, right? So if I took a little bit of this orange, maybe it, it influenced the plants a little bit. How would the plants be lit a little bit, right? How would they just be hit by that light? Maybe how would this floor just be lightly lit, lit like that, right? Just to create that warm, inviting feeling. Um, you know, maybe, it, maybe it'd be hit. It's a far fetch, but maybe the car would be hit, lit a little bit like that. So that would be my main thing for pushing it a little bit more. You took it really uh, much better than before. And this is how I keep pushing it. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I think one more thing I want to say overall is I think before I took this class, I literally had no idea how to play near or like any sort of like color, um, like theory skills, but this class really like now I feel myself like, looking at values and then turning the screen black and white. And then I just Ooh, think I that's awesome. Thank you so that's much. music to my ears. That's so important, yeah. right? Plain air painting, yeah. understanding how values and colors are linked to each other, being able to turn your painting black and white, right? Um, yeah. That's so important. So I'm really happy to hear that, Sophie. Great, great mm -hmm. job. Yeah. Thank you. What's more important, guys, than creating beautiful paintings is this. I want you guys from this project to be able to be like, okay, I know what clicked with me and I know what I need to keep working on. That's way more important than trying to create one painting that looks awesome for your portfolio. Because if you can glean that information, you can take that to your next painting, right? Versus just obsessively trying to create like one painting that looks awesome, which is impossible. I don't, you know, like no one can theoretically, I guess, do that. So um, what Sophie said is a really good point. 